I'm Chris Deedy, the Timothy E. Wirth Professor in Learning Technologies at Harvard University. My own career illustrates the tremendous shifts that are going on in terms of the kinds of work that people do. I have the dubious distinction of holding an endowed chair at Harvard in a field in which I've had one course in my life. That course was in 1967. It was in Fortran, for those of you who know computing languages. Boy, I use that every day. And it was on punch cards. I hated that course so much it drove me out of the field for the next eight years until Apple in the mid-70s brought out what at the time was called the microcomputer. And I gradually morphed from a science educator who used technology to a person who designs and studies teaching and learning using technology as a lens for understanding what's going on. But my story isn't that unusual. There are many adults who were wearing shoes for whom their academic preparation didn't fully train them for the role that they have. And that's absolutely the story for our kids and our children who are growing up into a world not just of multiple jobs, but multiple careers. And many of those careers don't exist yet. So as educators asking ourselves how we prepare for careers that don't yet exist, is a really interesting question. A couple years ago, the National Research Council came out with a report that's available for free on the internet called Education for Life and Work in the 21st Century. And it details 19 types of knowledge and skills broken into three categories. Cognitive skills, thinking skills, intrapersonal skills, which are characteristics of an individual, like being flexible or having a work ethic, and interpersonal skills, like being able to collaborate with other people, or being able to um, solve group problems if necessary when those arise. And the reason that they broke it into those three categories is there's a lot of research now that shows 10 years after you graduate, your intrapersonal characteristics and interpersonal characteristics have as much or more to do with your success as your cognitive characteristics. So yes, what we know matters, but how well we can act on that, both individually and with other people, is really important in terms of our being able to be effective in the future. So I ask myself how well I'm doing in preparing my students with these 19 sets of knowledge and skills. Not that every single day I try to hit all 19, but certainly by the time that students are done with a degree, we would hope that they would come out with what they need, whether that's a high school diploma, whether that's a college degree, whether that's a graduate degree of some kind, and one thing that I think is that it's not possible to do this solely within the school place and the school time. That if we restrict ourselves to the classroom and the kinds of course-related things that students do outside of class, we can't possibly get to this vision of what students need for the future, particularly along the intrapersonal and the interpersonal dimensions, because the cognitive part is typically what courses tend to focus on. And I think if we look at our own lives, we recognize that a lot of what we learned that makes us effective in work and in life comes from things that happen outside of classrooms, things like mentoring and apprenticeships in real world settings, things like having relationships with other people where you have conversations with them and they help you to interpret the kinds of experiences that you're having. And so I like to think about three contexts for education. The context of the classroom, the context of life-wide learning, where you're out in your home or in your community or in some kind of apprenticeship or mentoring situation and you're learning life-wide. And then the context of social communities for learning. And those might be face-to-face, -face, but through social media, they might be virtual. They might be in uh, 
side of a game rather than just through pure conversation. But they deal with people helping other people to learn. So I think as we look forward to education in the future, we have to ask ourselves, how do we orchestrate students' learning in the classroom, across their lives, and with other people so that we fully prepare them for life and work in the 21st century? I was one of 25 people involved in the National Education Technology Plan that was done in 2010. And we talked about that as connected learning and connected teaching, where what you learn is connected across your whole life. I want to close just by reflecting on uh, the most important things for kids to understand in a world that's as chaotic and fast-paced as the 21st century. And it seems to me that, that what we want is first to be flexible, because life is going to have many surprises across the decades. Second, to be motivated, that you need to come out of education really engaged with learning and having a very strong sense of self-efficacy, the belief that you can do things and having tenacity so that when you're not engaged and even if you're not sure you can do something, you still keep pushing, you still keep trying. You see if you can expand your boundaries. I think an appreciation of diversity is essential and a belief in social justice so that it's not just about you, but it's about helping everyone to succeed. And finally, I think it's not, you know, 5,000 little facts or everything in the standards for the curriculum, but it's really understanding big ideas and how those big ideas might shift and grow over time as our knowledge changes, but there's still the foundation on which we build what's going on. So if we can focus on those things and be prepared for whatever surprises the future holds, I think we can do a great job in preparing everyone for the future.